In this video, we will learn how to automate presets and parameters on Ableton Live using two methods, manually drawing automation envelopes and with MIDI note triggers. Let's get to it. Automation is a powerful tool for people like me who wear multiple hats, worship leader, music director, and musician. I'm leading, singing, and playing at the same time. Ableton Live functions as my on-stage assistant to manage the click track, cues track, auxiliary tracks, as well as helping me to toggle effect parameters throughout the setlist. Disclaimer, my context is worship ministry, and thus this video is geared towards sounds as encountered at the Sunday service. I don't use presets with bone crushing distortion or with extensive drop tuning. In fact, full disclosure, I don't change presets at all. I stick to one good mild breakup sound, use the overdrive with two gain states for crunch and lead, and only make slight changes with delay and reverb parameters. Further disclaimer, Ableton users fall into two camps of people, session view users and arrangement view users. Take note that as I am an arrangement view user, my setup and methods are necessarily arrangement view only. If you don't mind the milder sounds and the fact that I'm an arrangement view user, let's carry on with setup. Method 1. Drawing Automation Envelopes This method entails entering automation mode and using the mouse cursor to drag the desired change in values or toggle bypass states of the plugin components. The advantage with this method is that you can have a gradual change in parameters as opposed to an instantaneous jump between states as you would have with toggles. This is ideal for creative effects like volume cells without having a physical volume pedal. With the plugin in focus, enter automation mode. Now, Click on any component that you wish to automate. You should see its corresponding parameter value on the track, its lowest value being nearest y-axis 0 and its highest value being nearest y-axis max. Some parameters like pedal bypass will only have on or off states, while those with a taper like gain level or volume level will have assignable values from 0 to 10. Let's use the overdrive gain level as an example. Click on the red automation line to insert a break point. Determine how slow or fast you want the gain knob to be turned from 0 to 5. Instantaneous, drag the automation line after the break point vertically only with no horizontal pull. How about that classic clean to crunch section break over one bar? Drag the automation line after the breakpoint in both the vertical and horizontal directions, with level 5 being one bar away. Draw 
Drawing automation envelopes can be tedious after a while. How about a way of getting the plugin to respond to MIDI notes like you would with an external MIDI controller? Is there a way of doing this sans controller? This is where we have the second method, using MIDI clips. Method 2, using MIDI clips. This method entails using a dedicated MIDI track, creating MIDI clips with note values in them, and using these note values as automation triggers. There are three advantages with this method. Firstly, it's not as tedious as manually drawing in envelopes. Secondly, you can save the MIDI mappings on the plugin and use an external controller just in case. And thirdly, you can use this method to change presets. Create a MIDI track and assign its output to the plugin. At the spot you want an automation event, click and drag part of the timeline and create a MIDI clip. As is, the MIDI clip is devoid of any information, so it's up to you to insert a MIDI note value. Locate the MIDI clip piano roll and double click a note. Now, that note will be sent to the plugin when you press play and the playhead crosses that point in the timeline. Take note that there is a discrepancy between Ableton's MIDI note value and the note value that the plugin sees. As of February 2023, there is a two octave difference between Ableton and the plugin. For example, if you set up C3 as a trigger, the plugin doesn't receive C3. It receives C5 from Ableton, two octaves up. The plugin should now be receiving MIDI notes from the MIDI clip. It's time to assign parameter changes to those notes. You can do this in one of two ways. First, let's use the MIDI learn function on the plugin. Right click on any parameter and you should see an option called MIDI learn. We'll use the overdrive pedal bypass as an example. Right click on the bypass button, select MIDI learn, which will bring the plugin into a waiting state. It's waiting to receive a MIDI note and to assign that note for the bypass action. On the timeline, select a point slightly before the MIDI clip and play, letting the MIDI clip do its bit. If you've configured this right, the plugin will have captured that MIDI note and assigned it to the pedal bypass. MIDI clips can send multiple MIDI notes, so if you want to toggle both the overdrive and the chorus, just make sure that those MIDI notes are in the same MIDI clip. Hey guys, Editor Justin here. I completely forgot to mention the second way of configuring MIDI clips. Manually keying in the parameter changes using the MIDI mapping table in the plugin interface. Open the MIDI mapping table and under type, you have a whole host of options. Let's say you want to control the compressor and have it tuned differently during the song. We'll first assign a bypass function with note toggle. Select compressor active and assign that to a note. Now, let's say you want a clean section to have a higher compression setting with a higher output. You can configure a different note to change the state of the compressor using one note to change the compression setting and the output level. So let's first create the initial state of the compressor using one note to set the compression and the output level. Then create the second state of the compressor using another note to set a higher compression level and a higher output. Now with three notes, you're able to toggle the compressor bypass and set the compressor at two different states depending on the part of the song or setlist. Remember to save your MIDI mappings. It's a lot of work at first, but once you have this up and running, all it takes is small tweaks to arrive at your perfect setup. MIDI notes can do more than just toggle bypass. You can use MIDI notes to set parameters at defined values, and one note can trigger a whole host of parameter values across the plugin. If you're familiar with the Line 6 ecosystem, it's like the snapshot function. In this example, I've used one MIDI note to tune the delay U2 style, high mix and moderate feedback, and another MIDI note to return it back to a supporting effect for the overdrive. One final piece of the puzzle, preset changes. Do the same as before. Create a MIDI clip, assign a MIDI note, and then under MIDI mappings, you'll find an option called Note Preset. Assign the MIDI note to your desired preset in the drop-down menu. <laughs> Thank you.
Now that you've learned both methods, it's time to roll out the PS de resistance of worship music, a pedalless ambient volume swell. In this example, I used a MIDI clip to trigger a whole host of parameter changes to get the swell tone, then use an automation envelope on the volume pedal in the plugin to perform a pedalless volume swell. And with that, you've learned how to fully automate a neural DSP archetype plugin using Nableton Live. What do you think about automation? Do you need a controller on the floor to touch and control your sound? Or are you happy to let Ableton do all the heavy lifting for hands-free operation? I'd love to hear your stories, ideas, and thoughts in the comment section below. Now it's your turn. I'm excited to see how you guys are going to implement this. So feel free to post your video links in the description box below. I'll give it a watch. I promise. That's it for me. Thanks for watching this video. Here on my channel, I'm committed to helping you get the best tone out of your gear as well as playing your best for the Sunday service. If you're a worship musician on the same journey, consider liking, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and sharing this video with someone whom you know could benefit. This video is one half of the equation. I have another video describing hardware setup, which pieces of gear you need to ditch the pedal board and go all in with a laptop rig. It also demos the exact sounds I use for the Sunday service. So if you're wondering if a metal guitarist plugin can produce Sunday service sounds, do check out the video. I'll see you there. Also, I'm working on a video using the Helix as the ultimate plugin interface. Stay tuned for that. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'm all about worship guitar.